This video is sponsored by Humble Bundle. Have you ever been in this situation? <laughs> Humble Bundle! Video games are becoming way too expensive. I'm like, what? Why would you pay full price for one video game when you go to Humble Bundle and get two awesome games for just 12 bucks? Every month through their Humble Bundle, Oh, I get They curate two different games in a $12 a month package called their Humble Choice Program. This month's Humble Choice includes Death Stranding Director's Cut and Aliens Fire Team Elite. Yeah. That's two awesome games, both for 12 bucks. I mean, come on, it's not like my last two videos have been demonetized. The link below will lead you to the awesome membership and you can sign up for 12 bucks and support the channel. And they support charity. They support charity. Thank you to Humble Bundle for sponsoring this video. Hey, it's a video. It's we're doing this. It's yippee. Uh, originally, I had the idea of doing this like monthly roundup, all the movies I watched within a month. But not only did I realize that would be a little weird to do, but I don't know. That would also mean I have to include streaming releases or movies that I might have missed that moved to streaming. As of writing this, I still haven't seen Cocaine Bear, but it's coming to Peacock this month. So guess who's watching it? Yep. So I decided I'm going to just make individual videos dedicated to the movies I see in theaters. Keep in mind, this won't include anything that I watched on streaming. Any exclusives and such will not be discussed. Until the year-end video where I rank all the movies I watched. Anyways, here's Renfield. Renfield, your sole purpose in life is to serve me. Yep, just today I saw Renfield. By the day I meant uh, April 14th, which is a comedy horror mix, which I am glad they are bringing those back, featuring some of the names such as Nicholas Holt, Aquafina, Ben Schwartz, and of course, Nick Cage. Before I get into the story, I want to mention how hard it had to be to make an original take on Dracula. Similarly to how I complain about how there's all these Christmas Carol adaptations, the same can kind of be said for Dracula. I mean, these adaptations go as far back as the Christmas Carol adaptations. And while there's definitely a more variety when it comes to the Dracula films, it's still kind of difficult to make a different take and have it stand out from the crowd. The best comparison I would make is Hotel Transylvania, which featured the voice of Adam Sandler as Dracula. I will say no other Dracula interpretation feels like Sandler's. It's a way different take, and in my opinion, it's one of my favorite performances by him. So when I saw the trailers and advertising for Renfield, my immediate thought was, okay, Nick Cage plays Dracula, that's different. So now let's get into the story. The film follows a man named Robert Renfield, played by Nicholas Holt. In a strange way, they tie his relationship to Dracula the same way they tie in an abusive relationship a couple might have. Hell, it opens with him at one of those anonymous groups for people in a tough relationship. Turns out, yes, Renfield is the servant of Dracula, played here by Nick Cage. Renfield, however, feels as if he's stuck in the relationship mostly due to Dracula's manipulation. This is, however, until he crosses paths with two different people. One's a DUI checkpoint cop named Rebecca, played by Aquafina, and the other is the son of a mob family, Ted Lobo, played by Ben Schwartz. So now, trying to escape both his boss and an actual mob boss, Renfield must team up with Rebecca in order to stop both Dracula and the Lobo family. My first big applaud moment comes from Holt as Renfield. I'm sorry, you are paired next to Nicolas Cage, this guy, as Dracula. If you don't bring it, you get overshadowed pretty easily. But not only is Dracula not even in it very long, which adds to the fact that this film is called Renfield, not Dracula's Renfield, they kind of play with that a little bit, it helps Holt shine as a character, giving him room to really flesh out the character. I also am surprised that Aquafina, for all the films she's been annoying in, wasn't actually annoying in this. I want to express that I don't find her as annoying as others might find her. For like the 20 films she's been annoying in, she was also a highlight for movies like The Farewell, Crazy Rich Asians, hell, she was actually pretty damn good in The Bad Guys. And what does she have on the agenda? Well, she was in this, so whatever. But I get it, people are reminded of how annoying she was in movies like Her Eye and the Last Dragon or Shang-Chi. Hell, I like Shang-Chi and I just say, yeah, she, she was in it, that, that's, that's for sure. But here, not only is she giving a pretty damn solid performance, Aquafina solid performance, but still, she's also given quite a lot to say that's actually funny. That's often what I blame for her butchering of Rai and the Last Dragon. She is funny, but she wasn't given a lot of funny things to say. And yeah, let's address it. Nick Cage is pretty damn fun as Dracula. I'll admit, I was worried. Nick Cage is one of my guilty pleasure actors. I love watching anything he's in because he's just fun. Even if the film is bad, I'll watch it. 
And yeah, he's great here. Again, like Sandler, you wouldn't mistake this Dracula for another Dracula. Hell, they make him kind of a dick. He's supposed to put on this overbearing boss figure onto Renfield. And honestly, he does it really well. I also argue the action is really great. For some people. If you can't stomach gore or at least get queasy at it, don't see this movie. Renfield impales people with another man's arms, and that's just the least of it. I also like that the chemistry between Renfield and Rebecca never gets too sappy. That would have killed any momentum. It's just kind of like, hey, save my life. Uh, thank you. Yes, they hint at romance, but it never goes too far. But now, to the very much variety of not-too-good stuff. I should mention, this movie is not perfect. Despite all the stuff I like, I still wouldn't consider this top tier. First problem, why is Ben Schwartz in this movie? I hate most things Ben Schwartz is in, he's just, he's such a slimy scumbag in this. And usually I'm like, oh, that's the point of a villain, he's supposed to be scummy and slimy. Well, I would buy that if I bought Schwartz as a damn mobster. That is my biggest issue with Schwartz's character. For the love of Christ, stop Christ. thinking he can pull off villain roles. He is Weasley, and not at all intimidating. If they played him as supposedly being not intimidating, I would take him more seriously. He is seriously the only character in this movie I don't remember laughing at. Outside of him getting beat up, yeah, that, that, that's fun. Another problem I have with this film is it's a bit boring at times. When it cuts back to the Lobos, I just think to myself, oh yeah, crime comedy too. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. Speaking of out of nowhere, we also have this mom boss. She's supposedly like a side villain, but similarly to Skarsgård in John Wick 4, every time they cut back to her, I kind of just forgot she was in it. Maybe it's Schwartz's is overbearingly annoying performance, but yeah, I kind of forgot she existed. Also, Rebecca has a sister. Why? Because we needed a third act conflict. I'm not gonna spoil it, but yeah, this is really stupid. They could have done something else. Like, the, the sister is played really well, but she hasn't given a lot of screen time. Like again, the mob mother. I just think, oh yeah, she's in this. Damn it, two Bill Skarsgårds for one? Jesus. I also argue the film is too short, which could have solved some of the other issues, giving more character to the sister or other characters. The film clocks in at about an hour 33. Pretty short considering the Mario movie was only a minute shorter, and that shit's animated. My only other issue is that, while I am glad they gave Renfield a chance to shine, man, Nick Cage's Dracula is so good, I wish he was in it longer. But to the film's credit, I wasn't, like, edging my seat wondering, when is Nick Cage gonna be back? Because the other main characters are likable. Outside of Schwartz, yeah, he sucks. Overall, I gotta say, while the villains and the other characters could have been better and the film been longer, I was very pleasantly surprised with this movie. Top 10 by the end of the year? Probably not, but a fun film? Absolutely. My official Letterboxd score is 3.5 stars out of 5. And if you want to see the latest on these opinions, go check me out on Letterboxd. It's official Xander as seen displayed. See y'all next week for Bo is Afraid. I am the rock. And until next time... No, 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 is that... Fucking been for-